The Super Smash Bros. series is well known for its diverse selection of characters, and of everything we fans enjoy about this series, guessing who will be joining the lineup is always the source of the biggest discussions. We look for patterns, and we come up with fan rules to justify our thinking, but really, we don't need to. Over the years, series creator Masahiro Sakurai has gone on the record to discuss the creative process, what has changed game on game, and what has remained the same since the very beginning. That's what this Source Gaming series is all about. Out. I am Nantenjex, and with the help of YouTuber Yoshiela, we're going to teach you all the secrets of character selection for the Super Smash Bros. franchise. Brawl was a colossal game for the Super Smash Bros. series. It aimed to fill out the roster with both the missing all-stars of Nintendo, like Wario, Diddy Kong, and King Dedede, while adding in popular requests like Snake and Sonic, and both modern and classic characters for good measure. So when it came time to making the next game in the series, Super Smash Bros. 4, what was the best approach? Should Sakurai and his team continue what they did previously, or was a new approach needed in order to keep the roster choices fresh? Well, let's see if we can figure that out, as we take a look at why the characters of Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS were chosen. And that's a weird title, right? But it had a purpose. Nintendo wanted to make it clear to consumers which platform this game was on, because Nintendo didn't just release a single Super Smash Bros. game this time, they released two, Super Smash Bros. for 3DS or Smash 4, and Super Smash Bros. for Wii U or Smash 5. And I don't want to hear any comments about this, Nintendo and Sakurai classify these as two separate games, and so will I, because for the most part they are separate games. Only a few aspects of the two are similar, it just so happens that the roster is one of those aspects. Hence why this video will cover both games, although it actually doesn't affect which characters made the roster really. It does affect which characters got cut, but that's for another video. All you need to know is that every character was chosen with the understanding that they would work on both platforms. But that wasn't the only reason for their inclusion. So let's take a look at some of those other reasons, shall we? And what better way to start off than to look at the first character revealed, Villager. The villager from Animal Crossing was the first newcomer revealed for Smash 4, something that was not a surprise for many fans. The series was one of Nintendo's few major selling series that didn't get a rep by the time of Brawl. In fact, the villager was actually considered for inclusion in Brawl, but the plan didn't go forward as Sakurai had trouble envisioning how he would play in his head. Clearly, things changed, and with the Animal Crossing series growing during this period, with a successful game on the Wii and one just about to launch on the 3DS, the franchise was relevant and popular, ticking all the marks for inclusion. The series was one of the biggest of Nintendo's franchises that had yet to get a character, and so it really became a matter of when and not if. Next up we have Wii Fit Trainer who was certainly a surprise to many Smash fans, considering the coach in a fitness game doesn't instantly scream fighter. However, Sakurai clearly disagreed, and for him, it started with how yoga poses could easily lend themselves to a fighting game. Wii Fit Trainer was unique to most other fighters, because all her moves are yoga stances, and she would also be unexpected for fans, which further appealed to Sakurai. It helped that Wii Fit was also one of the most successful series on the Wii, and sold a ridiculous amount. Everyone knew the Wii Fit games, and with them, the Wii Fit Trainers. Rosalina and Luma are interesting picks. Unlike most newcomers in Smash, she isn't a main character or even one of the major A-list players in the Super Mario series, although granted, they're already all in Smash except for Toad. With that said, Rosalina was a growing star in the series at the time. Unlike Daisy and Waluigi, she debuted in an existing mainline console Mario title. Her debut, Super Mario Galaxy, is one of the most critically acclaimed games of the previous two decades, and a must-have title for the Wii. She also got to remain relevant through the many Mario spin-offs. Yet, all of this isn't as important as how unique Rosalina was. In Sakurai's original project plan for Super Smash Bros. 4, dated 2012, he said that Rosalina is a puppet fighter a fighting game archetype that had not yet been seen in Super Smash Bros. She also had this intergalactic feel about her, which was also something not represented in Smash. Yes, there are space characters, but they give off a very different vibe to what Rosalina gives off. 
Then next up is Little Mac, and well, there are two potential reasons this guy came back. First off is that Super Smash Bros. has a tendency to add retro characters like the Ice Climbers and Pit. Sakurai has commented that he likes to bring back older characters in Smash, and unlike, say, Takamaru, who wasn't very well known outside of Japan, Little Mac had that global appeal. It helped that he was a popular request on the level of someone like Ridley and Gino at the time. He was an assist trophy in Brawl, and that showed he could easily fit into the series. But the other reason is that Little Mac was also highly relevant at this time. It was only a few years prior that Punch-Out saw a very commercially and critically successful new game on the Wii that gave new life to the series. While the franchise's future was a bit unknown, it did give Little Mac an element of relevancy that both Pit and the Ice Climbers lacked when they were added. Little Mac would be known by both old and new fans alike, and this was important. And keep that in the back of your mind as we go forward, and on to our next character, Greninja. This one is obvious, at this point a new Pokemon rep is a given in every single game. The franchise is just that big. But why was Greninja chosen over all the other Pokemon? Well for starters, Sakurai wanted one from the newest game in the series, so he did something similar to what he did with Ike in Brawl. He left a spot open on the roster for a Pokemon from Generation 6, and then made a decision slightly later on when Game Freak actually had something to show because Sakurai was in an odd position in 2012. He was aware a new Pokemon game was in development, but the game was set for an October 2013 release, and he had no idea which Pokemon would be the next big star. Lucario got a whole movie propping him up, but so far Gen 6 didn't have anything of the equivalent. Eventually, he was sent some design docs for Pokemon X and Y from Game Freak, and from them Greninja was chosen. The reason? He looked like the most interesting to Sakurai. I guess Sakurai's intuition paid off in this case because Greninja would go on to have a prominent role in the anime and be one of the most popular Pokemon of all time. For once, it wasn't the anime being an influence on Sakurai, it was just a huge coincidence. Or maybe Sakurai had an influence on the anime. Next up we have three fighters, originally rejected in Brawl, and those were the Me Fighters. While they were rejected due to fear of online bullying and concern that they might be a little dull, they were given their chance here for one simple reason. Customization. Smash for 3DS and Wii U each had a unique design draw, individual play and stadium play respectively, and these influenced a lot of the game's modes, but one feature shared across both was the idea that players could customise their experience, and the Miis were the perfect character for that. They are, after all, custom avatars for the player, so it just made sense. Another obvious choice that everyone and their gods of choice saw coming was Palutena. The Kid Icarus series saw a huge boost in popularity after Brawl, and even saw a brand new revival just like Punch-Out did. And who led this revival? Sakurai. Between Brawl and Smash 4, Sakurai developed Kid Icarus Uprising and wasn't about to let his passion project go to waste. A lot of elements of Uprising made their way into Smash 4, and Palutena is included on that list. But why Palutena and not Medusa or Hades? The simple answer is that, much like Zelda, she's the series' titular character in Japan. The series over there is known as Hikari Shinwa Palutena no Kagami or A Mythology of Light, The Mirror of Palutena. She's the series Zelda, and so a natural choice for the series second rep. Moving on, we have another obvious choice for the roster, the next Fire Emblem character. Sakurai always intended to have a character from Fire Emblem Awakening, due to it being extremely relevant and extremely successful when Smash 4 began development. At first, he thought of the game's main Lord Krom, but struggled to make him unique when put up against Marth and Ike. With Robin, however, he had a mage who was also a tactician and could use swords. This versatility in his weapon choice made him fairly unique for Fire Emblem characters. He was also a main character, so anyone who played Awakening would recognise him. All of this pushed Robin ahead and ultimately pulled Crumb out. From one RPG pro tag to another, we have Shulk, and he was an odd choice for Smash. Sakurai even said so himself. This game wasn't massively well known, and only just saw release internationally. While the game came out in 2012 in the US, and thus was relevant at the time, it actually launched two years prior in Japan, and was only moderately successful. Shulk was also another sword user, albeit a futuristic one. However, according to Sakurai, the character was highly requested from Japanese players, and Sakurai himself was a big fan of the series, so he had no issue imagining how Shulk would play in Smash. So it seems like Shulk was the popularity pick this time, a character who made it in primarily off the back of fan requests. 
And now we get to the unlockable first party Nintendo characters, starting off with Bowser Jr and the Koopalings. Bowser Jr is the second main antagonist of the Super Mario series, and so is very well known. New Super Mario Bros U had just launched, and in this game Jr and the Koopalings all had their own clown cars, an iconic vehicle of the series. This vehicle allowed Bowser Jr to be a pretty unique addition to the roster, essentially piloting a mech and it was that uniqueness that got him in. It also helped that, being from a key Nintendo franchise, meant that Sakurai had easy access to all kinds of references and development material to work with in order to make Junior come to life. As for the seven Koopalings, the clown car and their general shared size meant that they could all easily work over the top of one another, and because Smash 4 also introduced 8 player Smash, meaning every fighter now needed 8 outfits, they offered the perfect number of representatives to show off that mode. It also allowed Sakurai to add more characters, and do so easily. And while we're on the topic of alts, we may as well transition into this game's clone characters, and Alf! Much like the Koopalings, Alf was included as an alternative costume for Olimar. He was the main protagonist of the latest Pikmin game, and he easily matched the proportions of Olimar, so he could work as a costume. It's kind of a similar situation to how Lucas was going to replace Ness in Melly and Brawl, because he was the more relevant character from that series. However, this way, nobody had to be replaced. He could have both Pikmin protagonists. And Alf wasn't the only character that Sakurai had planned to be an old costume for an existing character. Dr. Mario, Lucina, and Dark Pit were also planned to be costumes as well, for Mario, Marth, and Pit, respectively. In the case of Dark Pit, it's pretty much all the same reasoning as Palutena, with the extra caveat that Dark Pit was really easy to add, being a literal palette swap of Pit. The inclusion was a simple one, and doing so would make Dark Pit fans happy. For Lucina, Awakening's popularity and success was again a factor, just like with Robin. However, Lucina herself was being used as a series icon for the Fire Emblem franchise at this time, and was fairly popular in her own right. And given her role in Awakening, where she pretends to be Marth and is mistaken for him by folks, we can surmise that she must fight like him and resemble him, and so being an alt for Marth just worked. And Dr. Mario is just Mario again, so that was another easy choice. It helped that Dr. Mario was technically a veteran who was simply cut in brawl, and so had fans who missed him from Melee and wanted to see his return. But it was also this reason that Dr. Mario ended up being upgraded from an alt to his own slot. Sakurai had already given a reason in Melee for why Dr. Mario shouldn't be an alt of Mario, because the pills would require different properties, and this hadn't changed for Smash 4. Plus, Sakurai began to feel worried that fans of Dr. Mario might be disappointed that he had essentially been demoted from fighter to alt, and so he made the decision to separate the good doc from his plumber alternative. This worry about Dr. Mario would then end up leaking into the other characters as well. Fans of Lucina, Dark Pit, Alf, and the Koopalings might also be a little disappointed that their fighter of choice was just an alt and not getting the same special treatment that all the other fighters got. Unfortunately for the Koopalings, there were practical reasons to keep them all under Bowser Jr. It's one thing to have a single clone character, another to have seven. But the other three were all primed for an upgrade. Lucina isn't as experienced a fighter as the Hero King Marth, and this could have a gameplay effect in Smash, allowing Lucina to be an easier option for players, lacking the tipper and not requiring as precise combat. With Dark Pit, Sakurai already felt a little off having him use the three sacred treasures, Pit's new final Smash. And while they did look the same, the two don't act the same, so Pit's energeticness would look a bit odd on Dark Pit. It fit the character better to just have them be separate. And Alf? Well, unfortunately he also remained as an alt. But there is evidence that Sakurai did try to make him his own character as well, but I guess I'll save that one for one of the upcoming videos. Just gonna tuck him into my pocket for later, he's small enough after all. Let's get back to the unique characters in Smash 4 then, as there are only three left to cover, and let's start with our final Nintendo character, Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt is another character who Sakurai has 100% confirmed for us why he was included. Duck Hunt was this game's surprise character, like Rob and Mr. Game & Watch. They represented Nintendo's light gun accessory, and so they could incorporate multiple games at once. Unlike other light gun characters like Mr. Stevenson from Gumshoe, Duck Hunt was an icon. Sakurai even commented that in the US, Duck Hunt had a 90% attachment rate with the system. This was mainly due to it being a packing title. And lastly, Sakurai has commented that Smash allows him to bring back old and forgotten characters. 
so Duck Hunt fits that bill as well. That sounds like a contradiction to his iconicness, but really it just means that he wasn't that relevant in the modern era, and this was a chance to bring him back into the spotlight. And that does it for the Nintendo characters, but we do have two third party characters to cover off as well. Two real men, one who is Mega and one who pucks, I mean packs, I mean I mean Pac-Man and Mega Man. Starting with the latter, who was actually announced first, Mega Man was chosen much like Shulk due to his popularity. Sakurai revealed that, after Sonic, Mega Man was actually the most requested guest character for Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and Mega Man himself is a massive icon for Nintendo, specifically the NES and SNES. He was a big name, and Capcom is a big partner of Nintendo's, so having a guest from their mascot franchise just made sense. And Pac-Man made sense for similar reasons. Bandai Namco, the company who owns Pac-Man, were the developer of Super Smash Bros for Wii U and 3DS. For Sakurai, it made sense to let them have a guest fighter as well, and while multiple Bandai Namco characters were considered, Pac-Man just made the most sense. He was iconic, he was their mascot, and he was a character that Sakurai had thought about prior in Brawl. But who wore those other Bandai Namco fighters? Well, you'll just have to find out in two episodes from now because next time we're actually going to be tackling the final set of playable characters in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS, the series' first DLC. We're treating these separately because they were chosen at a much later date than the base roster, so it just sort of makes sense to treat them separately. And if you want to see that video, then make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it, and help your friends not miss this video by sharing it with them. Also, liking and commenting are good ways to show your support, as is our Patreon, like all of the lovely $5 plus patrons on screen right now. We love all of our supporters, and we hope you enjoyed this video. Don't be a stranger now, always remember to return to the source.